Let's look at uh, example two. This is once we start doing uh, transformations. So uh, translating up, down, left, right, and also having a, a vertical stretch or compression. Okay, so again, this is nothing new. We've done this for so long this year. Uh, just like we said before, this A will be compression or stretch. That's what the A value does, makes the function steeper or less steep. The H value is uh, horizontal translation. Okay, and the K value is vertical translation. All right. So basically what we're saying is A makes the function steeper or less steep and can also be responsible for reflection. H moves the function left or right. K moves the function up or down by that many units. Right? And just remember the most common mistake students make here is that uh, an H value that's, if you see minus H, that actually means move to the right. And if you see plus H, that actually means move to the left. All right, so that's how that works. Um, and again, none of this is new. We've done this so many times together, uh, especially in our last section, our last chapter for chap for uh, last few sections for chapter three. We did this uh, very very recently, so none of this should be too strange or unfamiliar to you. And it works exactly like our previous lesson for exponential growth, except now we're looking at exponential decay functions. Okay, so our strategy is the same. We graph this function first. And then we apply the translations uh, H and K. All right, that makes it very easy to do. Many other ways you can do this, but this is the easiest uh, way to do it. So um, here we go. Let's try this. Uh, here's my A value. My A value is three, so I expect to see a bit of a steeper graph. Um, here's my B value, which is a half. So I know this is exponential decay graph because it's less than one and bigger than zero. Uh, my h value here is actually negative 1. Negative 1 has to go into that formula to give me a plus. So this means I'll end up going left. Even though I see a plus, I go left. And then this is the k value. k is negative 2, so that means go 2 units down. Okay. So this implies go left, and this implies go down. Okay. So the k value, the sign you see, is the direction you go when you do the translation. So let's make our little table. Okay, and remember, the table is actually just for this function, y equals three times one half to the x. Uh, we disregard h and k when we make our table, okay, to make our table more consistent and easier, and then we translate from there. So you can do negative uh, one, zero, one. We can try those again, see how they work. So I get three times one half to the negative one, that's actually three times two, which is six. Okay, then three times one half to the zero. That's three times one, which is three. And then three times one half to the one. That is three times a half, which is just three over two. Okay, so we can plot those points. Uh, and we can also Remember that you don't have to graph this, but just remember that the asymptote is here for any function that doesn't have a translation. Okay, so the asymptote is also very important for you to make your translations and things correct. And then uh, the function is negative one, it's at six, so negative one at six, so that will put me up here. Okay, that's this point, and then zero three, zero three will be up here, and then one. Three, or three halves. One three halves would be here. Okay, now notice um, uh, that we're looking at a decay function that has not been uh, reflected or anything. Okay, so here you'll see reflection, and the reflection will be shown as soon as you plot the first points. But this is what we have so far. Now, this is not the end. Please don't graph the shape of the function at this point. We're not doing that. This is just a function without the translations. Now we have to focus in on this h equals negative one and this k, which is two, okay? So let me switch to a different color. h negative one means move the points left by one. So I go left one, which means go here, go here, and go here. Just move all the points left one. So this is my h equals negative one translation, 
okay, horizontal translation, left one unit. And then uh, K says go down two. All right, so let me switch to yet another color. K says go down two. So from this point, I just go down two, and there's my next point. Go down two, there's my next point. Go down two. And this one feels a bit tricky because you go halfway between, but that's still down two. And also remember, uh, translating left or right doesn't change my asymptote, but translating up or down does. Okay, so the asymptote has to go down two units as well. So here's my new asymptote. Okay, and please make sure you draw the asymptote, otherwise you're going to make the shape of your graph incorrectly. All right, so there's the asymptote. Has been translated and then just draw the function so let me go back to a different color and draw the function so here is the function that we're seeking to draw okay um, and you can see as we said all your original points are there um, so it's very clear to see how you did your translation please you don't have to draw the arrows or anything like that but uh, showing the points shows that you understand the translations you're making Okay, so this is it. We did it. Uh, all we have to do now is uh, do the domain and range. And the domain, like we said, for all of these functions is negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. But range now has changed. So range changes as you translate. <coughs> and students are quick to figure out that this number here, okay, the k number is the one that dictates your range. You just have to be careful if the function goes above that value or below that value. So in this case, you can see the function starts here and goes up forever in terms of y. And so my smallest number I'm ever going to approach in this case is negative 2, but not quite reach negative 2. You can see that the function doesn't actually get to negative 2. Okay, And then from there, it goes up all the way to infinity. So there's my range. All right, so... That's pretty much uh, domain and range. That's the function graph. That's about as much as time as you want to spend on this. Uh, looks like you know what you're doing there after you can do all that, right? Uh, so maybe try this one by yourself. Pause the video and then try letter B by yourself and see how you do there, okay, without uh, watching the video. And then you can watch the video to see the solution if you want, all right? So I'll just keep going and you can pause and start and play and we'll do whatever you want to do there. Okay, so this function, uh, we have a negative a value. Okay, so our a value is negative, so I expect it to be reflected. So I'm thinking something like this should happen because it's going to be reflected across the x-axis. Uh, here's my b value. It's still less than 1 and bigger than 0, so that's still a decay function. Uh, here's my h value, which is actually 5, and here's my k value, which is 4. So this h value means... A positive h value means go right five units, and this one would mean go up. I almost wrote down, but this one would mean go up four units. Okay, so again, we're going to make a table, and we disregard uh, we disregard all of this when we make our table. So we're going to make the table for y equals negative three times three fourths to the x makes our table simple. Um, uh, let me take that away, and then uh, we translate the points. Same thing we've been doing now for quite a bit. So I pick, uh, let's pick negative 1, 0, 1. I think those work. Negative 1, 0, 1. Looks like they work. Okay. And then I have this uh, negative 3 times 3 fourths to the negative 1, which is actually negative 3 times 4 thirds, which is actually negative 4 negative 4. Well, just squeeze that in there, okay? Uh, and then this is negative 3 times 3 fourths to the 0. Uh, that would give me negative 3 times 1, which is just negative 3. And then this would be negative 3 times 3 fourths to the 1, which is negative 3 times 3 fourths, which is negative 9 over 4. Uh, you can make this a decimal if it helps you. This is about negative 2.25, or negative 2 and a quarter, okay? It's hard to graph fractions all the time. So if you need to make that a decimal, do it, right? So here's my three values. Remember, that's a negative 4 up there, right? So 
uh, we plot the points, the initial points from based on this function, and then we'll apply the translations. So negative one, negative four would be down here. Uh, zero, negative three would be down here. And uh, one, negative two and a quarter, one, negative two and a quarter is about there. Uh, don't worry too much about exactly being precise with your fractions. That's hard to do. If we want to be exactly correct, we'll use a computer, okay, or a calculator or Desmos or something. So uh, those are my points. Remember the asymptote is here before translation. So now we have to translate everything. So you can choose if you translate the asymptote or the points. Let's do the asymptote first this time. Let's say translate the asymptote up four. So this is my vertical translation that has to happen. So I'll translate the asymptote up four, which would put it here. Okay, uh, so that's the asymptote up four. And then uh, translate the points. We can start with H and then do K like we usually do. Start with H. So H says go five units right. Okay, so five units right. So if I do that, uh, my graph will move to the right, so five units right. So one, two, three, four, five. There's that. And then this one, one, two, three, four, five. And then you can see they're kind of relative to each other. Okay, like that. So this is my uh, h equals five translation. Okay, and then I move all those points up. So let me switch to a different color again move all those points up and I move them up with by four units because that's my K value. So if I move them up four, one, two, three, four, that puts me here. One, two, three, four, that puts me here. And four, that puts me here. Okay, so you can see that the asymptote is extremely important to you being able to draw the shape correctly. So this is my uh, K equals four vertical translation. Okay, and so if you make the graph disconnect the dots, I have something like this happening right here, okay? So everything that we thought was gonna happen, happened. This means reflect across the x-axis, it did flip over. This means go uh, right five, it did go to the right five, and up four, go to the, it did go up four. Then you can also see that, like we said, uh, this three here and the three-fourths are bigger numbers, well, actually the three, and the three here are the same number, but uh, three fourths is a bigger fraction than a half. So the graph is technically steeper on the right than it is on the left, all right? And then uh, what am I doing here? Domain, we said the same thing. Domain is this, and range, this is the thing you have to think about. So we said it does really follow this K value, K value of four, you can see that the graph starts at four, but just be careful, since A is negative, the graph has gone down actually, not it's not uh, the domain doesn't go from the k value up, it goes from a negative infinity towards the k value. So I've got negative infinity all the way up to the k value, which is four. Okay, and four is open parenthesis because the function doesn't really reach that. Okay, guys, so that's nothing really surprising for you here. I hope that helped.